welcome to part two of the Battle of Gazala Revisited as an anti-tank on Let's Play Battlefield 1942. This is an occasion where I would definitely get a lot of use of the engineer's repairing ability. And that's kind of the dilemma that you often find when people are considering using the anti-tank class. The only maps where you'd really consider the anti-tank class are the maps with lots and lots of tanks. The idea being that you're going to run into more tanks than enemy infantry. However, on those tank maps, uh, particularly these desert maps like Gazala or Tobruk or Aberdeen, those are the same maps where you're going to get a lot more use out of the engineer's repairability. Plus, you've got some anti-tank capability as an engineer with the landmines and X-Packs. Alright, I guess that flak gunner was already killed. Alright, Moron number six is, uh, presumably a server admin for this server, so I hope I was within my rights uh, attacking the main base. But anyway, I was killed. And they're probably too busy dealing with all those hostile planes overhead. There's a hostile tank there way in the distance. It's hard to get a good bazooka shot at distance because out of nowhere the bazooka just starts trailing off and it falls to the ground. Okay, not sure where the tank went. And we have all the flags now, so they're definitely going to be bled to death, I think. 111, 171. Yeah. Where is that coming from? Right. Huh, that's interesting. I guess he got out of the tank and... I don't know where he came from. But there, as you can see, if you're killing an infantry and you're an anti-tank class, most likely your weapon was the grenade. It's a lot easier to kill infantry with grenades than with the bazooka or the pistol. I guess I should mention at this point, for those of you who played Battlefield 2 and not Battlefield 1942, the uh, anti-tank only comes with the pistol and grenades, and the knife of course. There's no uh, gun of any kind, and I wish I had set off that signal flare to the enemy tank. On Battlefield 2, there's a... Uh, small, pretty much ineffective machine gun, but at least it's an anti-infantry weapon. Now I noticed from the kill messages up there that someone's got the B-17, and as I uh, pointed out on the El Alamein episode with the B-17. Usually not a, a big factor whatsoever. It's just hard to really make an impact with the B-17 on uh, most occasions because people are so spread out. It's also easily shot down by hostile airplanes. That infantry I just killed should have done is try to slide down the canyon and get himself within the capture radius just to be a nuisance. It's easy to hide behind this shed to my right, and you very, very often find infantry hiding out there. And I believe that may have been the first time someone on this LP has been in my uh, tank's mounted machine gun and gotten the credit for a plane kill. You'll notice that I, my, I was keeping the tank steady so that he would have a, a greater possibility of aiming properly. You see, the unlike Battlefield 2, if, if you move the tank around, it moves around the machine gun, not just moving the tank itself, but the turret of the tank. There's a bazooka guy in there. It's funny, I mean, 
probably throughout this entire LP, there have been very few occasions where someone's been uh, in the gunner position on the tank and gotten the kills. So the fact that he was able to down a plane is pretty cool. And I, I was hoping that he was going to jump out of the gunner position and take that empty tank. But unfortunately, he was uh, too dedicated and assistant and got us both killed. Yeah, once again, uh, I really, really doubt that on this LP I'm going to shoot down a ta an enemy plane in the air using the bazooka. But uh, just for the heck of it, just to put the, the enemy planes on notice. And no, this that's not one of you know my standard, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to do such and such, and then I go ahead and do it. That's, that's it's for real not going to happen. And once again, a situation where the engineer repair would have come in handy if that hostile plane wasn't out and about. Notice that you only get a total of six rockets. Five in reserve, one in the bazooka itself. So the anti-tank class, along with the sniper, are the only two classes where I think you really, um, as a typical player, would have much use for the ammo crates. Uh, the sniper, of course, only gets 15 total bullets, which is kind of lousy because you're supposed to be, you know, isolated in some faraway sniper's nest. Whereas the anti-tank class, you really can see people shooting all their rockets out and needing to refill their ammo. And this is, well, we're kind of in the exact position that the enemy had been in uh, earlier on in the round where we've got that one isolated control point we're being bled by the three other points that are held by the enemy. And the reason it's such a pain is that, as you can see on foot, it's just a long walk. The other points are very easily reached just by walking between them, but it's kind of a pain. And also, I'm actually getting pretty lucky here that there aren't any tanks patrolling the area, not even in the infantry. But even though we're getting our uh, tickets bled out, I really just don't see us losing this given the size of our lead. And it's only a matter of time before we get some people to at least neutralize. All we have to do is neutralize one of their three flags. Alright, I'm tempted to go after that single infantry there, but he's well out of range and I'd have to use up all my uh, grenades. And there's no way that I'd be able to capture the flag that he's headed toward anyway. And he'd probably beat me to the empty tank, so I'm going to head over to this middle point because it's the one flag that you're really likely to be able to capture as infantry if you're lucky. You see how big the capture radius is? I'm already within it, so by the time I really expose myself to danger... I think that guy's a sniper, so I should have a problem here. He may have been trying to jump over that little sandbag thing. It, when the sandbag is in a particular shape, you can still jump over it, but it's kind of a pain and you have to time it right. So I didn't have to deal with him respawning in because I was already uh, in progress of neutralizing the flag. But that tank that I saw earlier over uh, to the northeast, presumably he's going to be coming over here. Actually, that's a captured Sherman, so... <laughs> yeah, there's always going to be at least one tank rolling in from one of the flags. And I just hope he doesn't see me, because if he doesn't, then I should get a good angle on him. Yep, one shot to the, to the back of the tank, and that's exactly how you're supposed to do it with the anti-tank. Stay tuned for part three.